ربش رحلی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل اللقتم السانی یفق قولی اللہ ارین الحق حق و ارزقن طباع و ارین الباطل باطل و ارزقن اجتناب اللہ علامان علما آتیت ولا معتی علما منعت ولا ینفع دل جد من کل جد اللہم ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا و علم تغفر لنا و ترحمنا لنکوننا من الخاسرین ربنا اننا سمعنا منادیا ینادی للایمان ان آمنو بربکم فآمنا ربنا فغفر لنا ذنوبنا و کفر عنا سیئیاتنا و توفنا مع الابرار There was, uh, there's a actually very interesting story um, that once a bypasser asked a farmer that do you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you believe in God? The farmer, the villager said, yes I do. The bypasser, the person passing by, asked him, how do you believe in the presence of a God when you have never seen or sensed or heard the voice of a God? The villager replied that I know a camel has passed from this path although I have not seen the camel. And I know that because I see the footprints on the road. And I also see some bushes which are half eaten. And I can also see the camel doing his thing on the road. So from these simple signs I know that the camel has passed from this path. So how can I believe that humans are created as perfect beings? Animals are created as perfect beings. The sun and the moon do their duties perfectly without without going off their path. So from all these signs, I believe that there is a God who created all these things. The by bypasser was obviously impressed and convinced by the logic of a villager. The modern science believes in identifying and verifying things through scientific logic, through scientific reasoning, through scientific method. Whatever you can see, whatever you can experience, whatever you can hear, whatever you can taste, whatever you can touch, whatever you can prove, prove after gathering basic evidence or from, from your senses, you can believe in its presence. Also, the modern science believes in the presence of a nucleus within an atom. The modern science has seen the material all around us, the but the modern science has not seen the atom within, uh, the nucleus within an atom. <coughs> but they know from the logic that The nucleus is present within, present within an atom because all of the reasoning goes in its favor. But the modern science, either it, it's Stephen Hawking or other prominent scientists, they do not believe in the presence of God. And they are in a Dajjalic way, in a satanic way, they are misguiding the masses 
in a way that the science does not prove the presence of a God, which is totally incorrect. There is another very good example that once upon a time there was a debate held between a Muslim and an atheist. And the time was agreed upon for the sunset. The atheist and the Muslim had to reach the, the, the place of the debate at sunset. The atheist arrived over there at the sunset on time. But the Muslim got late. He arrived an hour late when everything was dark outside. So the, it was a negative point for the Muslim. The atheist obviously made fun of the Muslim that you did not arrive on time because you know you, could, you, could not, you would not be able to prove the presence of God. The Muslim replied, I got late because I had to cross a river. But there was no boat on the bank of the river, so I could not cross the river. I waited for some time. Then I saw a tree present next to me. It got cut down on its own. Then I kept on seeing and it automatically got cut into pieces of wood and those pieces assembled themselves into a boat and I got into the boat, I crossed the river and I reached over here. All this process took some time, that's why I got an hour late. The atheist started laughing and immediately the atheist said that you are making this story up so you could, so you could Prove yourself, you, you, you are making a lame excuse for coming late. The Muslim replied, you are laughing at a tree cutting itself on its own and getting itself cut into pieces and assembling itself into a boat. But you believe that a human like yourself was created on its own. You believe all of the trees around the world are growing on their own. You believe that the earth was created on its own. The sun and the moon were created on its own. How come if a boat cannot be created on its own, how come all of this perfect system that does not miss its cycle, that does not go out of the balance, is created on its own. The atheist did not have anything to say in reply and the Muslim, after getting reaching over there one hour late, won the debate. So it, the scientific reasoning proves the presence of a God. Once it is proven that there is a God, then it is obvious that the God is the king of the kings. The God is the one who was before everything and he would be after everything and everything that we can sense from our five senses is the creation of God. Now the question would come, what is the protocol of the God? What is the law of the God? What is the ruling coming from the God. How would we know that? There are hundreds, thousands, maybe more religions around the world. How come we know who is the true God? How come we come to know that which religion is sent upon and acceptable by the God? That would be the question. Out of all of the religions around the world, three religions are 
the major ones and these three religions are the Abrahamic religions. They, they are based upon the base of the religion of Abraham that we call in Islam Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So these three religions are Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Judaism by the by the numbers is the biggest religion uh, sorry Christianity by the numbers is the biggest religion Islam is the second one and Judaism Jewism is the third one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we Muslim believes believe is the true God is the creator of all beings and we Muslims know that Islam is the true religion sent upon by the God. When Islam, and why is Islam the true religion? There's a very interesting story that happened uh, with us only yesterday. That there is a Muslim brother from Switzerland. His name is Yahya. We were meeting and we were sitting with him. And he told us a story. He, he told us the story that his, his father is a Jew, his mother is a Christian, and he was inclined towards uh, Hinduism or, or uh, Buddhism. Anyways, the story goes on that he decided to go to India by road, but when he reached Greece, he changed his plans and went straight to Masjid al-Aqsa palace in Palestine. And over there he felt a lot of spirituality. He says he, he saw, uh, he, he felt things he has not felt before. So because of that spiritual experience, right then and there he made a prayer to God without knowing who is the true God. He made a prayer and said, O oh God, wherever you are, whoever you are, all three main religions that claim to come from one God converge over here in the land of Palestine. And it is the center for the Muslims, it is the center for Christians, and it is the center for Jews, please guide me if these three or any other religion around the world is from you. Please guide me to that one. And after making this prayer, he says he goes out from Masjid al-Aqsa, uh, from, from uh, like right front of uh, Dome of the Rock, he goes outside into the streets and randomly he meets a person out of the blue and that person calls him hello man assalamu alaikum or whatever uh, the words he used uh, to break the ice he he said do you want to know more about islam that's the first thing he experienced after leaving masjid al-aqsa and it happened about four years ago and he realized that this was the message from the god and Islam is the true religion because that's the first thing happened to him and he felt his prayer was accepted and he accepted Islam in Masjid al-Aqsa and offered the first prayer uh, Salat al-Maghrib in Masjid al-Aqsa as his first prayer. His plans of going to India uh, were like uh, he cancelled those plans. He, he was able to identify Islam as the true religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many a times I've told the story of a Hindu who used to live uh, near Islamabad uh, before partition and his name was um, uh, Kirshan Lal. I met him once uh, when I was a teenager probably and he said that when he was a school going child um, in his not a child in his early teens he used to argue with Muslims that Hinduism is the true religion of God or Islam is the true religion of God 
And once a Muslim child, Muslim class fellow of his, told him to make a prayer to God. Make a prayer to a God, however you recognize God. If you recognize God as Bhagwan, make a prayer. And do also make a prayer to Allah. And ask the God that, O oh God, whichever is your correct religion, whoever is your true religion, please guide me to that one. And what happened to that Hindu teenager that he saw Prophet Muhammad in his dream while being Hindu? And then he saw Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once again. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself invited him to Islam. And after waking up, after seeing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, two times he went to a local masjid and embraced Islam. So the point I'm trying to make is that it is proven from scientific logic, it is proven from all of the knowledge that humans have that there is a God. And there are three main religions that know and claim as being the religion of God. We have to decide between all those religions around the world that which is the correct religion, correct rule, ruling sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the God. And the answer to this question is that you have, all you have to do is simply clear your heart from all influences and make yourself available to the God. And you make a prayer to God that, O oh God, whoever you are, However you are, I make myself available to you. And I pray to you, O oh God, that guide me towards your true religion. No matter you are a Hindu, no matter you are an atheist, no matter you are a Jew, no matter you are a Christian, no matter whichever religion you are following, all you have to do is with a clean heart, you have to make a prayer to God who created all of the universe, who was before everything and he would be after everything and there, could, there can never be anybody equal to him. You have to make a prayer to that God. Not Jesus Christ in your mind, Naudubillah, he is not the God, he is not the son of the God. You don't have to make a prayer to Nauzubillah, Summa Nauzubillah, to any idol. You don't have to make a prayer to anything else you imagine in your mind as a God, Nauzubillah. You have to make yourself available to the God, creator of all beings, the one who was before everything, the one who would be after everything, and who is exalted and above everything everything you have to make a prayer to that one lord the king the god and then you have to ask for guidance inshallah we expect from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you have enough purity and sincerity in yourself purity in making the dua in making the prayer if you're a hindu if you are a christian if you're an atheist you Obviously, you cannot be pure unless you worship one God. With all your impure, impurities, you have to make a sincere dua to God. And we hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would guide you to the correct religion. And that is the true religion of Allah. That is Islam. Judaism was also the true, the correct religion sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent by the God. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an update through Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Then Isa alayhi salam was the true prophet and all of the humans from around the world were required to follow Jesus. And after Jesus alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam 
was sent by the god allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the final messenger and the final prophet so all of the humans of the world are required to follow muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so now islam is the final and most updated religion sent upon by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is not going to be any religion after islam so every human being around the world is required to follow islam if they do not follow if they do not follow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be angry with them and if they follow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we would open abwaabu samawati wal arz we would open the doors of the skies and the earth and allah's mercy and rahma would keep on falling from all sides on the humans if they follow allah's true religion that is islam and they would be given eternal peace in jannah in paradise in the heavens and if they do not follow in the afterworld in the hereafter they would every infidel everyone who denies would receive the hellfire na'udhu billahi min zalik may allah save us uh, from the hellfire and this world is also full of injustice full of atrocities full of problems because the people earn it zahar al fasad fil bahri fil barri wal bahri bima kasabat aydi nas allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is fitna there is problems there are atrocities there are troubles in the waters and on the land in the dry places and in the in in the, the wet places around the world because zahar al fasad fil barri wal bahri bima kasabat aydi nas because people earned it the wars around the world the injustices around the world the homeless people around the world the impurities the problems the anxieties the diseases the 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 shortage of rain fire falling from the sky in the form of missiles and bombs the fires falling from the skies into the waters the wars around the world it is all bima kasabat aydi nas because people earned it so if people start following the true religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah would open barakat us samawati wal arz allah would open the blessings from the skies from the earth and it would be a very very peaceful world to live in this is the solution to all of the problems people are facing around the world so this is my invitation to every person around the globe to come and follow the true religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is islam that is how you would receive mercy and peace and blessings in this world and after you die there is going to start a life that would that would never end and if you end up in hellfire for that life there would be no coming out from that and if you end up in paradise there would be no troubles and tribulations and problems after that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the righteous ones and among the followers of true followers true consistent followers of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma arina al haqqa haqqa wa arzuqna ittiba'ah wa arina al batila batila wa arzuqna ijtinaba allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa ahli baytihi ajma'in